Hey y'all, you'll have to bear with me while I cook for this Thanksgiving. Um, just gotta kinda check some things here. and Continue my baste while I'm cooking, but I've had a bunch of questions on horses that had trouble. And if you go back to some of the earlier videos, uh, I had a horse that was pretty troubled, but wasn't so bad for the videos because a lot of it, we did the preparation. Now that's not always the case. Um, sometimes, depending on the wreck, and again, the wreck could be small or big, we all process things differently. Ooh, let's get over the sun, how's that? Um, but the first thing I wanna do is I want to make sure that the horse is good to get in the trailer so that I can be at a distance. Say like I did an earlier one, I didn't quite sit in the front seat. Sometimes I sit in the front seat. Some of that's for show, but it's a distance thing where I can send the horse down the trailer and it goes around the corner and it's kind of, for lack of better term, self-loading itself. Well, I had a horse once and one of the main premises is, is sometimes we think it's pretty good. And my friend used to say, if they're not progressing, they're regressing. So I want to continue to get that better. And I don't want to kind of get monotonous at what I'm doing in the distance I'm loading so that the horse is continuing to get better. And again, getting them good to drive because on a horse that wants to shoot out, I'm going to have to drive them back. Now I do not pull, do not pull a horse, especially when they're in the trailer. I can block once they get out. And I'll corner and keep them straight. And straight stock animals really help to calm them and settle them. So I want to work on straightness, and they may try to avoid, but I get them good to drive. Now, in the question on a two-horse trailer, once I get them good and they're self-loading, sometimes I might even close that butt bar because they've learned to lean on it. And I might rock them back and drive them off of that. That gives me a little bit of a cushion so they don't just shoot out every time. I wanna make sure the butt bar is in a position where they're not gonna go under, not gonna go over, but the best they can. I never tie a horse in the trailer without them being able to hit the back so that it drives them forward because stock animals naturally, when there's pressure in front of the shoulder, they wanna go backwards. So especially on a horse that pulls back, that's the first thing we want to fix is get them light to back where they're feather light and you can move out forward and there's no brace in there. There's no hesitation. First, I get it smooth without the trailer. Now, once I get them good and driving up, then I'll take that butt bar down. And again, I practice kind of doing the hokey pokey, one foot out, drive them back so that they're not always in the habit of all the way out. Because when they get in the habit of all the way out, Eventually what happens last happens first. So you get to where you're going and people unload them. And so eventually a horse, I have heard it so many times, he was good to load, but now he's not. Well, because when you unload them and they get relief, maybe they get a little, just a little bit fast and they build on that and they can build on that pretty quick and then they get relief. So they escaped out of the trailer. So eventually that's the first thing. The other thing, I don't want to pause at the back. I want to have everything ready to go so my horse just gets in. Is there more finished? Yes, yeah, sometimes I'll undo it. But for the most part, I want to have it ready to go for the horse. Now, once I get to driving them in, setting them out one foot, two feet, three feet as they build over time, I'll then, again, one of the biggest things, I had one horse one time, I actually called Buck on it because usually... If I can get them loading from the front and get all that stuff good, they're quiet in the trailer. This horse, however, was not. And same thing, it banged its head, it was in a rut. But I called my friend Buck on it. He said, well, what do you think I would do? And I'm like, well, typically we load them in the trailer. And he's like, yeah, and after about four or five states, they get quiet. So sometimes we just don't practice it. We only practice it when we want to go somewhere. So we got to practice that. Maybe... This horse in particular needed to get comfortable. We put a bumper on its head because it had gotten really bad. And she, while I don't feed my horse when I travel, because when they run out of food, then they get some anxiety or bang and people give them food. 
plus on those long trips where they're 20 hours and maybe even in a trailer when I'm going from clinic to clinic, they'll never intake enough water. So I never feed my horse in the trailer. But if there's a problem and you need them to stand in there, I might start by feeding them in there. Just let them put them in, close the door. That becomes kind of a box stall. So they learn to get some content. Basically, anything I can do to help the horse along the way of his path and make it a little easier. Then don't just haul him five minutes, ten minutes, then get him out. You got to practice. We used to, we wanted to do a video. My friend Hal, he passed away, but we wanted to do a video where we called it bar breaking because a lot of the rodeo cowboys, they'll let their horses sit an hour for the bars. But we are worried we'd get sued doing shots of Coca-Cola and people drink and drive. Don't drink and drive. But you do want to get your horses where you can go to dinner and have your horse in the trailer. But that takes time so you can build up to that so that it's not something freaky and so that there's time to let them settle. Just like tying a horse to a post. Sometimes they want to paw, 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 and you got to give it some time to settle. So anything you can do to break that down, but you got to practice loading them. If that means every night, feed them in there, get up after the late, late show or whatever you do late at night unload them, put them up. It'll take some dedication to get them through. But with some patience and with some understanding and time, time is that one thing that you have to put the time in. So I hope this helps you a little. I'm sure it might bring up more questions. Feel free to give them, I'll talk them through. Fortunately, I don't have any problem children. Just a reminder, um, I'll try to link it later on in the comments, but go to one of those earlier videos where I am driving that horse that had trouble, it wanted to shoot out. I got it pretty good. Unfortunately, I prefer a slant load trailer, um, but straight loads are great to get them to load and that claustrophobic thing and other things like that can be a little greater. Um, we do do it with all our horses from time to time because there are fires out here. And that's kind of why we're going over all these babies now. Cause while I was in Europe, we had a fire and the two, two of the horses had been in the trailer, but they were barely, barely, barely halter broke. So now they're a little more halter broke. We needed to get that done. And then the baby, we needed to get done too. So anyways, I hope these out help you. Um, please comment if you have questions. It always helps to further things out. If you have questions, it helps me. I try to learn the most I can. I learn from other people, learn by watching videos, but... Um, you know, they load millions of cattle every year. They don't lead one cow in. When they're going to the shipping, they drive them all in. So you got to get those horses good to drive before the trailer. And then if you if you have to, you know, I've, I've had horses that were so troubled. I got some panels and I put up there just to get them used so they could see a little bit and get them to go straight in those panels and then built a ramp where they could step up on and then put some walls on it. Again, these are some ideas that I've had to help some horses through but you have to spend that time to do it. I hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy the journey. Please like and subscribe. Share with your friends, whatever, if you've gotten this far. I do really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing down the road. Enjoy the journey. Happy trails.